Hi, my name is Olga Maus from Pixel Train. I'm a senior 3D VFX and game dev trainer with more than 20 years of experience in teaching artists all over the world. This advertising free tutorial was made possible by my wonderful Patreons. If you like it, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And maybe you also want to become a Pixel Train patron yourself. With that, you support the making of these tutorials and get even more benefits like patron only tutorials, technical articles, industry news, Discord access, and discounts to my publications. Link in the description below. Thanks a lot, and now let's get started. Have fun. This time, we want to talk about the new features in the keyframe section of Blender 4.1 and the work with the keying sets. And you will see that there are some cool improvements and some breaking improvements, which really break your muscle memory. And it took me some time to now get used to that, but now I can confess, I like the new workflow. So let's get started. To understand the workflow a little bit better, we first have to discuss a little bit of terminology. So what is a keyframe? What is a keying set? And then we look into the legacy behavior and then the new behavior. For this, we work here with Suzanne. The first thing I do here is I select Suzanne. My time indicator here is in frame one. And if I now want to make a keyframe, there are different ways of doing that. I think you know that we can go here and click these little dots here to make keyframes. Or you can use the end menu, which I do most of the time because I work in full screen. So command spacebar, then we can open the end menu here with the end keyboard shortcut, and then we can work here. So if you want to key now, for example, the location or the rotation, what you can do here is you hover over the vector which you want to key, in my case location, and you press the I keyboard shortcut. And then you see with these yellow indicators, now we have set a keyframe. Another thing which you can do is a right mouse button click. For example, I want to rotate my Suzanne around X, for example. So you can make a right mouse button click, insert the keyframe, which means the whole rotation vector is keyed. Or you even can go here with insert single keyframe to key only the X value. So these are the classic ways of making keyframes. Now let's remove these keyframes. By the way, you can do that. If you go over here value and press Alt I or Option I, so this removes also the keyframe here. And we also had the chance to do it here inside of the viewport. And for this, we had the I keyboard shortcut, like insert keyframe. But at this point, the behavior inside of Blender 4.1 has changed. So if you now press the I keyboard shortcut, Instead of the insert keyframe menu, which we had before, and we want to take a look into that in a moment, you see that you directly get now keyframes in all three transformation properties, location, rotation, and scale. And in most cases, this is not the thing I'm after, because in a rig, for example, it's really seldom that I need all three properties keyed. Scale is really seldom, sometimes in Rigify, for example, for a finger coil or so, but in most cases, it's rotation sometimes location and really seldom scale. Blender decided when I press the I keyboard shortcut that I get keys in all three of these options. And the question is, where is this defined? And for this, we have now in this new Blender version under Edit Preferences, under Animation, here a section in the Preferences where we can set the default key channels, location, rotation, scale, and the custom properties here. And this is something you can change if you don't like this behavior. But if you're working a lot in a rig, for example, you really often want to change what you want to key. And for this, the old behavior with selecting a so named keying set was a little bit easier. So let's discuss the word keying set. So let's get rid of these guys first. Okay. And talk about the word a keying set. You can change a keying set in Blender by going into the timeline and you open this drop down here. And here you see the word active keying set. So this here is a list where we can set the active keying set. And this is a whole list of different combinations of these transformation vectors and many other things. And this is something you have to know when you work with the auto keyer. But this is also the same thing for the I keyboard shortcut. So let's test this. If you go, for example, here and say, I want to have a location keying set, which is only the location property. And you now work here and press the I keyboard shortcut, you see that you only get the location keyed. And that's great. So it's a matter of changing the 
active keying set. Let's remove that. Because going into this little tiny drop down here is not the thing I want to do in my practice. Instead of that, we have now a new keyboard shortcut inside of Blender 4.1, which is Shift K. And Shift K changes the active keying set. And it's the same menu, but it's under my fingertip. So I go here and say, I want to have now location and rotation. And doing that, pressing the I keyboard shortcut, I get exactly that here. And in the background, Blender set this here. So if you go now here into frame 30, you move your Susan over, rotate it in X. So nothing really useful, but it's an example. Press I again, you see, you get exactly this vector. If you ever want to change that, Shift K again, and then you can say, okay, and from now on, I only want to have rotations or whatever. Go between that here, make your change, rotate X again, make something like that here. Press I and you see you only get a keyframe here on the rotation button, not on location. By the way, setting the key set with Shift K is something which is permanent. So if you want to get rid of that, you remember we clicked here this X here to get rid of this keying set, you also can use Shift K again. And then you see that we have here a clear active keying set. And if you click that, it has removed the keying set from here. And that's it. So this is a really good workflow. Setting it with Shift K, pressing I because you don't have the two clicks which we had before. If you want to get back to the legacy behavior where you get always the full menu of the keying sets while you're keying, you can press now the keyboard shortcut K. And K is the classic insert keyframe menu. So looks like earlier, I want to, for example, key now location and rotation, go a little bit farther here, do something, press K again, and you see Blender is clever enough to select the last selected item. I have to click with the left mouse button. And so it's like in old school Blender before 4.1. So let's get rid of all these keyframes here again, because I want now to show you, let's reset Suzanne here's location by Alt G for removing the grab, Alt R for removing the rotation. So let's get now back to the keying set idea and the auto keyer, because key sets are also important for working with the auto keyer, which is really common if you have a complex rig. Selecting this auto keyer here, records all the changes you do on your object. But this can be a pitfall because if you go by accident, for example, you want only the location key, and this is something we can do here by moving it, but by accident you pressed S, go a little bit out, forget that, and now you have suddenly a scale keyframe. So auto key can be dangerous. So instead of going directly with the auto key, we normally Select here under the auto key options the option only active keying set. If you make this tick here now, the keying set which we used before, which is this one here or under Shift K, is now also active. So this is for me a little bit of safety. So I go to location or rotation and now I can do everything here with my Suzanne. I get the keyframes which I want, but if I press S for scale, you see. It doesn't change at all here. I don't get a key from anymore. So this active keying set tick also respects that here because this is changing the active keying set. So these are the changes. In my opinion now, I like the new workflow. I had to learn the new keyboard shortcut Shift K for switching the keying sets, but this is much more convenient now for me because I then can use the I keyboard shortcut over and over again and if I really want to have the old behavior, the K key is always there. I hope this tutorial helped you a little bit to understand this new way of working with keyframes and keying sets. If you have any questions, please write in the comments below or in our Pixel Train community Discord. See you next time. You have the mouse.